What's up? This is Ryan Siegel from Los Stellarians, and you're listening to Wheeler's Weekend Jams live and direct. Wheeler's Weekend Jams live and direct. Wheeler's Weekend Jams live and direct, and we are in here in, uh, well, in the cool, I should say, in uh, downtown Las Vegas, where it's very hot. Uh, Right here next to me is Mr. Ryan Siegel of Lost Stellarians. Dude, thanks What's so happening? much. What's happening? Thanks for having on, me. Man. Yeah, man. Just uh, enjoying Vegas, man. It's yeah. been a great, crazy weekend. How is, uh, yeah, how's this weekend been treating you? Oh, man. It's just every time I come to Vegas, I feel like it's just exhausting, but uh, it's amazing. I mean, this is, I think, the best time that I've had in Vegas so far just because everybody I know is here and everybody I like to party with and, you know, share the musical experience with. So it's been awesome. It's a great vibe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, congratulations on uh, your guys' uh, new album that just Thank came out uh, last month. Thanks, man. Uh, the Mas Chingan. Yep. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, how was, uh, how was uh, this recording process? Uh, you know, it was completely, uh, it was an accident almost in a way that the, we, we did this record because we basically, um, you know, we did the first record, Cholo Soul, which was kind of a premeditated process of, of taking old songs that S.A. really liked, you know, from his record collection. And... Um, he hit me up when I was still living in New York and was just like, Yo, you know, you know, we have another project, Ghost Wolf, whatever. He's like, but I kind of want to do something separate from that just as like a little pet project mm-hmm. where we kind of take these old, obscure songs and do our own thing with it. And, and just, you know, because a lot of these songs, are, I mean, some of them, they weren't even repressed. They were never like released on any kind of wide scale. A lot of like regional, you know, soul, stuff like that, soul funk. And uh, a lot of the music that just kind of like got buried in t- you know within time and um and so you know that record was strictly just like you know we're doing covers and this is going to just be a fun little thing and then i'll never forget like one day we were i was in the live room of the studio which is on the property of of essay's spot Holy and, um, yeah yeah and um i had the doors open because it was like a really nice day and he was out doing some yard work or whatever and so i started playing um just started messing around on this riff and it was the, literally the first song on the record uh, primo started messing with that riff and he texts me and he goes lay that down immediately i have a vocal i'll be down in 10 minutes and that was the birth of this record and um so what we kind of did was we almost inspired ourselves you know from the first record to just go and do our almost like our own version of of the music that we were covering from the first record mm-hmm. um and yeah i mean it just it was completely organic and honestly i think i went on a, a musical tear um for like I don't know, two to three weeks where I just hit, kept like one a day. It was like one instrumental, you know, just kept hitting him, send it to him at the end of the day. And he'd have lyrics and stuff like, you know, anywhere between a day later and a month later. And mm-hmm. we, you know, obviously he's super busy with 311 and I've got my own stuff, but like we ended up just knocking out this record and, and actually a lot more songs that we still haven't even released um, within a short amount of time. So. And you recorded most all the instruments. Yeah, the only thing that I didn't play on this record were um, were the horn parts on a couple of songs that we have. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it was, um, it was the first record that I got to do basically everything and it was just, you know, I, I, all the instruments, mixed it, um, you know, just produced it, wrote, you know, wrote the music and mm-hmm. a lot of background vocals. And it was just like a dream come true, man. Cause I'm honestly, you know, working with one of my heroes and, <laughs> and he was so excited about it. So it was just like, you know, I, I personally just like, don't, doesn't matter to me whether the, the project explodes or stays at the level that it's at. It was a labor of love. So this, was this project ever like when you guys were, you know, in Ghost Wolf and Nexus of Evil, was this kind of always, in the back of his mind or your guys mind and he says it was i mean he, he was definitely like kind of brainstorming this this project i guess for a while he but he just you know um never really i guess like had someone to kind of compliment him on it as far as like making it happen and and you know uh with ghost wolf obviously that project started with his you know with evan anderson his, his nephew um and uh and then i joined in on that as well but evan that was him and evan like that was really their their pet project mm-hmm. and and that kind of developed with them, and I just kind of helped facilitate some of the some of the um, drums and other you know other elements. And so, it's yeah, like I said, it was kind of one of those things where like I just said, hey man, you know I'm down for whatever. You know you want to try something out musically, let's do it. You mm-hmm. know. And so I remember actually the first song we ever laid down as like a, an experiment was Sleepwalking, which was the first, um, which was on Cholo Soul, which is a, a cover of, uh, from this band called The Summits, and. Um, from there, he was just like, no, man, we got to do more of this. So, mm. yeah, it was, it was really cool. I, I mean, anytime he gets stoked on something, I'm just like, <laughs> cool, all the smiles. there, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. 
Uh, yeah, tell us about the, the cover of this new album. Is It's his grandfather. No, it's his father. It's his father. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, uh, Ernie Martinez, man. Um, How yeah. did that all come together? So this? he like basically um, there were, he was digging through old photos, or actually had his one of his uh, siblings um, digging through old photos back in, in Omaha, um, and they came across this one really just like classic old photo. And he says like basically that you know his family didn't have a lot of money, so pictures of the family were kind of few and far between at that point, you know, with his, with his parents and, um, and his uncles and aunts and uncles and his grandparents. So that was like one of those photos where like he just got, you know, was looking dapper for, you know, just a kid from, from Mexico and, mm -hmm. and just kind of like, um, so, so anyway, the, actually the, the artist that did it, um, his name is, uh, uh, Eloy Torres and, um, amazing, amazing painter. And so, uh, as it was just like, man, it would be really great if he just did this, like, if we incorporated um, this, like, basically iconic photo, you know, um, of his father uh, into this, um, God, I don't even know what you would call it, just like this landscape of different elements that kind of inspired the record, you know, at least the lyrics, you know, um, and kind of his heritage, you know, kind of where his family came from and um, that mix of, like, just super American Midwest, um, vibe but being essentially a minority in in the middle of nebraska you know um so as soon as he came to me with the concept i was just like dude absolutely and and really you know with him it's like i like to just capitalize on you know his vision because i mean he is the lyricist and he's extremely um uh inspired lyrically and 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 tells great stories so i you know for me i'm all music like i don't do any kind of <laughs> yeah. visual things i i let the you know other people kind of interpret what they see visually for the project based on the sounds. Um, so I was just like, man, that would be great. And then literally two months later, he's like, yo, the, the painting's done. And I'm like, sick, can't wait to see it. And we went to go see it. Um, and, you know, it's like a five by five. It's mm -hmm. really, it's a big, big painting. And I was just like, oh my God, dude, he just killed it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and to me, it's like, you know, it's one of those things where even if, like I said, if the record just kind of does very small amounts of sales or whatever, like hopefully in like 30, 40 years, it's one of those records that people are, you know, dig crate digging and they <laughs> find they're like, dude, I don't even care about the music on this. Just look at this cover, man. It's so cool. It's it's art, you know? Um, and that's that's an, an awesome thing just in itself. So. It's family oriented. Absolutely. You know, so that's always going to be yeah, very special. Yeah, very, that was very special to him and even me because now I, I, you know, I know his family and, mm -hmm. and um, just a really cool story, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, I follow his uh, Instagram. And mm -hmm. He'll like just post any picture, and he won't just post a picture and be like blah blah blah. He will. He. I mean, he's a he's a poet. He is a poet, I mean, and um, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, man. Like he's just, you know, just his lingo, and you know, it's a very like spoken word type thing. But he's able to really translate it through, you know, through text. And I mean, I always tell him, I'm like, man, you know, I think we'll we'll probably end up doing with this next. Uh, we're gonna put. The Mashingon on, on vinyl, and I'm just like, man, you should just do a booklet of all your your writings and your you know your your poet you know your poetry and and stuff because it's just like, it's awesome, man. Yeah. He's so 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 good at it. Yeah. So. So is there going to be an upcoming, you think, tour at some point for you guys? Yeah, well, we're, you know, because the, the, the music itself is, there's a lot of elements to it as far as like horns and keys and percussion and all that stuff. It's, it's, it's one of those things, it's, it's definitely tough to tour with a full band, just honestly based on scheduling alone, you know, but we are definitely planning some really special things going on for um, the end of this year where we're going to do uh, probably, you know, like a, a, maybe like a residency in LA. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of maybe to keep it like West Coast for now and maybe do New York too. But yeah. honestly, I think that both of us kind of have this, this vision of kind of trying to do it overseas because mm -hmm. I think that this is the kind of music where there's a, a big appreciation for um, old funk and soul uh, over in, you know, uh, Europe and Japan and all these really cool places that I haven't even really been yet. And he's been there, you know, and, and definitely is more familiar with it. So I think... You know, once we have that pocket of time where, like, you know, he's not, you know, full force with 311 and I'm not full force with something something else, like, we're going to do it. And it's going to be really cool. Awesome. So, yeah. 
And, uh, well, you were telling me you're on tour right now with Fall Out Boy and Wiz Khalifa. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of moonlight as a, a, a music director and guitar player for another artist named uh, Max. He just goes by Max, and uh, he's awesome. Just actually also kind of rooted in soul and, and soul pop. He's definitely more on the, the modern end of things, not, not so much like what we're doing, but he's probably one of the most talented dudes I know, and I'm... I love it, man. I mean, honestly, I just love the fact that like I can kind of split my time between my passion projects and then you know what's technically my work. But everything that I do for work is still fun. You know, I'm I'm extremely grateful and lucky. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. Well, I ask a lot of different musicians this. I I find it kind of funny, but I'm I'm a movie buff. So, mm -hmm. if you had to compare Lost Stellarians to a movie, what movie would it be and why? Man, um, I would have to say like probably one of the like. I say I wouldn't say like Grindhouse or, you know, so maybe something Tarantino, something like that, um, just because it's got that like real seedy kind of, um, you know, cholo Mexican thing that he mm -hmm. loves to with Robert Rodriguez and, and stuff like that. And I know that we've even thrown around ideas of of doing almost like a um, graphic novel around like what we're doing, and especially like going back to his writings. You know, he he really he's actually developing a kind of a story, possibly even for the next record, where it would be more of like a concept record and something um, visual, maybe even like a short film would go along with it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, that and like kind of any of the, uh, just kind of, uh, some of the, even some of like the black exploitation stuff, like, you know, um, uh, Dolomite, you know, stuff like that, where it's just kind of like this, there's a comedic aspect to this low budget visual thing to mm -hmm. it, but ultimately it just, it's, it's a vibe, Jango. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like it's definitely, it's a vibe, you know, mm. and um, it definitely plays off of the whole like Mexican-American type thing, which mm. is hilarious for me because I'm not anything related to Hispanic, but I love, I love the culture and yeah. I've always been really into it and just working with him has been, has made me more aware of it and, um, you know, I, I, I think it's really, really cool. Well, I think it's fantastic you guys uh, are creating this music because it's Thanks, not man. around anymore, you know, so that sound is so just... Yeah, you know, I, honestly, man, there's a lot of, like, great, um, what I call it, kind of, like, re revivalists, people that are, you know, doing it, but they, they still have the intention of making it so that it can be on the radio and, and exactly. you know, modern radio, you know, like, mm -hmm. I mean, Mark Ronson, I think, is the, one of the, the dudes that is, like, probably bringing it somewhere where he keeps it very real and authentic and um, but yet it still makes it onto you know top 10 top 20 radio and mm -hmm. all this stuff and he kind of carved out that that niche where people are kind of like they don't need the super shiny um, production and, and stuff like that like he he t tonally really dials it in mm -hmm. and he's definitely like one of my like if I had to have like an inspiration to make this project something you know uh, uh, modern or anything like that like he's he's like my muse I guess you can say mm -hmm. um, him and um, Mayor Hawthorne you know I mean yeah. these these dudes are just they you can hear where they're what they're listening to and what they're inspired by and it's all kind of we're, I'd like to say they're we're cut from the same cloth in that yeah. respect so yeah. Well, you guys don't even need radio. I play you guys on my show. It's right on, on man. Tom Thank you. List, but. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Like I said, man. For me, it's like I think a lot of a lot of a lot of bands, a lot of artists get wrapped up in the idea of like oh this this has to go somewhere and mm -hmm. and and they they force it and they force it and and you know and it's great because obviously if you know if you believe in what you're doing you want it to go as far as possible but you know what i found in, in this project is it's the one band that i i haven't like gone out on the road with and haven't like pushed you know down people's like throats you know relatively you know yeah. but um but it's the project that's gotten, I, I think, the most kind of like uh, notoriety in, in the musicianship aspect, and mm -hmm. that's something that I've always like, you know, I've taken a lot of pride in, and yeah. um, and so, if anything, it's like I just love walking around, even just here, and you know, some random people that mm -hmm. I haven't met yet coming up, and be like, dude, that record is awesome, and I'm, you know, like I don't need, I don't need a, you know, I don't need a, a crazy amount of people like, you know, blowing up my ego. I'm yeah. down with just the, the few people that get it. Yeah, get they get it, and that's that's important. And you enjoy it. That's what absolutely. That's what yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Well, hey, man. If there's anything you want to say, you know, to any any of the fans, where to find you? Uh, man, uh, holygrailian.merchdirect.com. You get all our our records, merch, all that stuff, and uh, holygrailian. Uh, Bandcamp and iTunes. It's all there. But uh, Los Delarians, check it out. Listen to it. It's uh, it's funky music.
Awesome. And well, uh, Ryan, man, thanks again so thanks much. Thanks for having me, man. Wheelers I appreciate it. Absolutely. Wheelers Weekend Jams live and direct. Go visit wheelersweekendjams.com. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Share, subscribe, do all that. You know what's up. Out. My man. <laughs>